Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are back after a two-week hiatus, and we celebrate the feast of the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God, and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior, found on page 66, if you're following along. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say two Our Fathers and two Hail Marys. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, as we mark the death of St. John the Baptist, the forerunner of your Son, may we heed his call for the rejection of sin and rededicate ourselves to emulate Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, Gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I commanded you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I, this day, who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, I will sing your salvation. I will sing your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing your salvation. 
For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, and I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as I mentioned today, we celebrate the, the feast of the martyrdom or beheading of St. John the Baptist. And what did John do? Why, why did he get killed? Well, he taught the truth. And he even taught the truth to Herod. He said, you shouldn't marry your brother's wife. This comes directly from God through Jesus. Of course, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. So he knows what Jesus was teaching. He knows the truth incarnate. And he's giving it to Herod, the king. And yet Herod, he says, feared John. I don't think he feared him like a, you know, Freddy Krueger type fear, but more of a, uh, a respectful fear. And listen to him listened to the truth. But Herodias, his wife, well, she didn't like that too much, that, you know, who wants to hear what you're doing is wrong, right? So she hated, literally hated John the Baptist and wanted him dead. And so she, when she had her opportunity, when her daughter performed in front of so many guests at a big party, a big banquet, and Herod, being in good cheer, said, whatever you want, I'll give you, thinking maybe it was perhaps a new chariot or something. Ended up asking for the head of John the Baptist, the life, the life of one of the most righteous men who ever lived. And 
he felt cornered. You see, here we have three people at fault. Number one is Herodias, who told her daughter to ask for John the Baptist's death. Number two, we have Herodias, Herodias' daughter, who listened to her. And number three, we have Herod, who, to avoid personal ding to his pride, went ahead and ordered the execution. Isn't that so much what life is like today? If we don't kowtow to the current narrative, how much do we get persecuted, right? Be it with our friends or on social media, or even worse, be it threatened with our very livelihoods, or yes, maybe even our lives when it comes to it. But the truth can never be compromised. We who have been given the truth, who know the truth, who believe the truth that has been given to us by God through his son to the church for the last 2,000 plus years, we can never compromise that truth no matter what it costs us personally. And that is the lesson of John the Baptist. Yeah, there may be a Herod that listens to a Herodias and her daughter that wants us dead. Okay, our life here is finite anyway. We're going to leave this earth at some point, my brothers and sisters. But how do we leave it? Do we leave it knowing that we did all we could to bring Christ and his truth and his teachings to the world? Or do we leave it having compromised it? That's a big question, because how we leave this world is going to have a bearing on our eternity thereafter. If we always uphold, as much as we can, the truth and teachings of Christ and try to give it to others, no matter what the personal cost, our eternity will be with our Lord, just like John the Baptist, who is not only a saint, but a martyr. Or, if we say no to God and give in to the world and everything that it's trying to do to bring us away from God. Yeah, we'll have a little longer life here perhaps, but our eternity will be much less pleasant, separated from God with the fallen angels in hell. Choice is ours. We've got to make that choice every minute of every day. Every choice we make has a bearing on our eternity. Just like John the Baptist, who never compromised his cousin, we should never compromise our Lord. So let's take a lesson of John the Baptist, who, no matter what the personal cost, kept the truth that was given to us by Christ alive and going in the world, so that we may not fall into the world, and eventually, through an eternity, separated from God in hell with Satan and his minions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. With hearts united in prayer and hope, let us come before our loving and compassionate God with our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. 
I pray Bishop Anthony, Bishop Jerry, and all clergy that they may lead their flocks with humility and guide all on the faith of Christ, truth, and love, following the example of St. John the Baptist. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, that they may work humbly and resolutely for peace and the protection of all human life, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth, that they may be protected from harmful influences or doubt and always know of God's steadfast love for them, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill and the injured, especially those on our parish prayer list, that God will heal their bodies, minds, and spirits and restore them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions, we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, for all of those who have fallen away from Christ and his church, that they may come home with the help of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our deceased loved ones and those who will die today, that they may receive a place at the eternal banquet in heaven, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as you answer our prayers, give us the faith and hope we need in this life, and above all, let us grow in your love which lasts forever. We ask us for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. John answered and said, No one can receive anything except what has been given him from heaven. Say, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice to be prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. Almighty God, we ask you to accept these gifts we place before you on the solemnity of St. John the Baptist the herald of your Son in both life and death. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Your servant, St. John the Baptist, was baptized into the body of Christ and following our Savior, offered his own life as a testament of faith in the promised resurrection. By maintaining his faith in the face of violence and death, St. John the Baptist gives the church courage to be a faithful witness standing against the evils of this world. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hero of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice the Mass. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer 2, which is found on page 82, if you're following along. 
We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb, there he dwelt and was made flesh. In him he suffered for sent him, sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread, he gave you thanks, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church now and forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. Your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Because the blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, quaitulis pecca tamundi. Miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the second communion prayer found on page 98 if you're following along. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father. May partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. I join you now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken this food, may the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. And you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Let us pray. Lord, our God, in thanksgiving for this communion we have received, let your church rejoice in the life of St. John the Baptist, who by his death achieved the crown of life and bore witness to the saving death of Christ. We ask this to the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's join me now in a prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. To be loved is to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. If you're brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for a holy mass today. Pray to have a wonderful day. Stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of each other, remain in this state of grace, fight evil wherever and whenever you find it. And hopefully, if things continue to go well, we will have mass this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 a.m. We ask you to join us. And for the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time on Sunday, uh, over Labor Day weekend, also here in Kalani, during these hog days, uh, we ask you to join us at 9 a.m. All Central Daylight Time. To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus victor, Christ Jesus ruler, Christ Jesus Lord and redeemer.